Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and version 5.20 of KDE Plasma Desktop was recently released. As per the announcement, it's a massive update with a lot of new features, visual changes, subtle refinements and performance improvements. KDE is a top class Linux desktop and a very popular one. Almost every major Linux distro provides a KDE variant. It's known for its modern and visually appealing looks with tons of options for customizing the desktop to your liking. Almost every desktop element can be customized. KDE and GNOME are two Linux desktop that has been there for the longest time, almost close to 25 years now, and represents two very different style of desktop interface. KDE is known for its Windows-like interface, whereas GNOME has traditionally been closer to Mac OS style design. Though I think off late the similarity has been reduced only to the default look. So in this video we'll go through all the new features and changes introduced in KDE 5.20. Alright it's been a long time since I used KDE desktop. So this is going to be very interesting to see what all have changed. Here I have installed KDE's own Neon distro which receives fastest KDE updates and I think the only distro apart from Arch Linux that gives you the latest 5.20 desktop. Alright, so this is the desktop and as you can see, it does gives you a Windows 10 vibe, especially with the start menu and the taskbar. Now the taskbar has got few changes in the latest version. The taskbar now shows only the icons of the applications, similar to Windows 10, instead of a full horizontal bar with app name. A small speaker icon appears in the taskbar to indicate the app that's playing audio. It's a clickable icon and you can click on it to quickly mute the audio. I think many people will find it pretty useful as it saves few clicks. There is a horizontal bar that is displayed at the top of the icon to show open apps. A blue bar indicates it is active. The orange bar indicates that the processing is done. It is similar to Windows 10 where the horizontal line is at the bottom of the icons. Now if you have multiple instances of the same app open, a green plus symbol appears on the icon. You can toggle between all the open windows by clicking on this icon or by using mouse scroll wheel. Also if you have multiple virtual desktop then hovering the mouse over the desktop in the taskbar gives you a list of all the open applications in that desktop. So as you can see there are many new changes to the taskbar. The start menu remains the same. This is the default layout but you can edit it to set it to a minimal look or you can have the full screen dashboard style start menu. Alright now coming to the system tray, it has also got few changes. First the status and notifications pop up now displays icon in grid layout instead of list. You can navigate to a specific setting by clicking on it. Now disk and devices here is new and replaces the device notifier. It now shows all the disks in the system and not just the plugged in external disks. Next is the new dynamic size for icons in the system tray. When set to dynamic size, the icons in the system tray dynamically resizes as you resize the panel. A new feature is added to the volume icon. Now if you do a mouse middle click on it, you can toggle the do not disturb mode on or off. Alright, so that was all the major changes in the system tray. Alright, the next visual change is on screen display bubbles, which has been changed to a minimal horizontal bar style instead of a square box. Alright, so these were the visual changes. Now let's check out the new features and improvements. Now the KDE desktop search utility, KRunner, which gives a drop down window from the top of the screen with search result. Now instead of a drop down, you can choose it to be displayed at the center of the screen like any other pop up window. Alright next, the desktop top left corner is now a default hot corner that gives an overview of all the open apps just like mission control in macOS. It shows all the open apps in all virtual desktops in a single screen. Alright next, let's go through the system settings app which has got many changes. First. Bluetooth, user manager and the auto start windows have been rewritten from scratch. They share the same design aesthetic. Shortcuts page has been streamlined. Standard and global shortcuts which used to have separate pages now have been merged into a single shortcuts page. Now my favorite change here is the highlight change settings which is down at the bottom of the window. When turned on this gives an orange dot indication against all the settings that you have changed from the default values. 
Now this is very helpful if you have done some tweaking and later decided to revert the setting back to original. KDE desktop can be heavily customized and I think this feature will be very helpful to many users. Alright, so that was all the changes in the settings. The new version also got a new wallpaper. Now the other very useful new feature is the ability to set charge limit of your laptop battery below 100%. So for example, you can set the battery charge limit to say 80%. Now your laptop will be charged only till 80%. It will not get charged beyond 80% even if the charger is plugged in. Now this is a feature that helps preserve battery health, but not all laptops supports this. And even if your laptop supports, there's a chance that it may not work in KDE. It is better supported for certain laptops and apparently it works great with ThinkPads but not in my test machine even though my laptop supports this feature and it works well in Windows 10. You can check if your laptop supports this feature or not by searching for this file in your system. Alright so that was all the new changes in KDE. There have been few improvements in Plasma running on VLAN display server as well but I'm not going to go into that for now. You can check the detailed list of all the changes in KDE's release log page for 5.20. The link is available in the description. Now the system performance is as expected with the KDE desktop. It is heavy on memory compared to other Linux desktop due to all the transparency of menus and animations. On idle, the RAM usage was around 1.6 gigs. Alright, so that was all for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. And a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. Alright, so thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.